so that'll lift the leg a couple of millimeters. The prop will sit in here. This is not your traditional sail drive. Wish us luck. This is going to be a big project. I've uh, finally started working on Vilda's propulsion system. Oh, the installation. So, not into motors and cables yet, but uh, the mechanical bits that will uh, sit in the hull, holding uh, the motor and, and, and the drive. Hi there! If you've been following Building Vilda project for a while now, you probably know that our plan is to make Vilda a fully electric sailing catamaran. In this episode we start the long and exciting journey of the propulsion system installation. First, the mechanical bits. To remind you a little bit of the plan for the drive system, we suggest you watch this older episode in which Axel explains more. Our journey to getting Vilda in the water is going to be packed with challenges, a lot of measurements, tough building materials such as fiberglass and epoxy, cutting scary big holes in our boat, but what matters is that we'll make it happen. Stay tuned! This is not your traditional sail drive it's something different <laughs> this motor is a 10 kilowatt uh, brushless electric motor I have a bit of fabrication to, to do to uh, ensure that the drive coupling works and then all of this from here will be encapsulated in a tube so that it can be raised and lowered uh, allowing me to fully retract this uh, this drive unit that's why I needed something that was this short so when when retracted into the hull the boat only draws 45 centimeter the motor will be well above the waterline in a cylinder that obviously it needs to be watertight so this is what it starts as. Uh, <laughs> this is a fiberglass thruster tube and uh, the um, drive or the prop will sit in here. Uh, a thruster, um, bow thruster sort of thing and uh, that will be mounted at the bottom of this tube and that tube will then go inside this bigger tube that bigger tube will be mounted in a hull in the hull so this section of the bigger tube will go through the bottom of the boat and into the water <laughs> the reason i'm doing this is because I want uh, the drive to be retractable. Uh, making it retractable reduces drag and, and uh, gets the prop out of the water and, and yeah, it's hopefully going to be good. It's a bit complicated, but it's really nothing new. Uh, many of these uh, shunning uh, catamarans are, are built with uh, outboards in the back that are retractable. I'm just doing it a little bit different. The reason I'm making these round 
is uh, not to add complexity, <laughs> but to add the ability of make, adding an azimuth drive uh, later on. It's not something I'm going to build mm, straight off. Uh, so, because uh, it'll just take time that I don't want to spend at right now. What I do want to spend time on right now is um, making the mechanics of this work. So getting these tubes into each of the engine bays, mounting the drive leg to the prop shroud and the prop shroud to the motor compartment or the drive compartment, drive cylinder. Uh, don't know what to call any of these parts because yeah, they don't have names <laughs> yet. But in principle, I'm making a retractable drive. And in the end, I'll make it a retractable azimuthing drive. This is a bit of a mess, I apologize, but we just got back and I just got into it. And this is uh, my prop and my drive leg. And that's a bit different, I think, from from most things available on the market. There is one or two that do a retractable electrical drive uh, now. There wasn't when I started this. They, of course, cost an arm and a leg, but yeah, good, good drives, I'm sure. Uh, biggest advantage with the way I'm building it is I hope to get very efficient regen. That remains to be seen. I'm sure I'm gonna get good thrust and <laughs> I'm equally sure I'm not going to get high top speeds. But it's a sailboat, not a motorboat. So, yeah. This is how it begins. And hopefully it works out well. I'm sure it's going to work out. It's uh, how well it's going to work out is uh, something I'll see. Wish us luck. This is going to be a big project. Hopefully it won't take forever, but uh, yeah, just getting them into the boat for now is uh, going to be a big step. So I placed one of these in the starboard hull already, uh, so and marked out uh, where to cut. I haven't cut the big hole in the bottom yet because uh, that's a sort of a <laughs> once you start, there's no going back, and. Uh, I've placed them in there so that I can think of any adjust adjustments I might want to do before committing. Yeah. As you can tell, we haven't done this before and many of the details of the build, including the motor's assembly, are being thought through as we are making progress. That's why we hope you bear with us and watch the slow videos as we present the material and the explanations, sometimes maybe a little slower than we would have wished for. The reality is that nothing is straightforward, everything takes longer than anticipated and we don't have it all figured it out. So this drive system isn't your average choice of propulsion for a performance catamaran. A pretty simple system like this is fairly complex and absolutely pretty unique. So that's uh, the first step uh, complete or yeah, at least partially complete. I uh, used a hole saw to, to make this hole. I didn't have a 60 millimeter holes also. I, uh, Sanded out the remaining couple of millimeters with the, with a yeah rotary sanding tool. So uh, now the drive leg fits in the tube, and that means I can get the prop in the tube and, and I can bolt it to to this bit. And uh, what I need to do now is take the uh, fiberglass tube and make that fit in this cylinder. And right now, it doesn't. So, I need to take off the corners, basically. I'll try to do that as round as I possibly can to make it a snug fit in the cylinder as it goes up and down. I do want to leave a little bit of uh, 
wiggle room in there but not much a couple of millimeters uh, you should do it so that's step two I have to figure out a good way uh, to accurately remove uh, fiberglass from these corners I, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it but it's fairly easy to put a, a straight line on a cylinder I have to match that line the other end and uh, remove material parallel you, you'll get it I, uh, you know what I mean it's uh, not super easy this is a straight edge cut from fa factory this is not so I'll, I'll use this as a reference and uh, this I cut with uh, diamond blade yesterday worked really well no uh, no heat build up at all so that was great and that should make it fairly easy for me to cut off material here I just have to figure out a good way to do it evenly I got a bit of a start here on the, on the thruster <laughs> this is what I've mocked up yeah I put the leg into the into the tube here after marking center lines and and uh, divisions here and yeah this is not 100% stable but close enough to allow me to accurately or sufficiently accurately mark out what needs to be cut off so we've got a quarter here <laughs> And uh, well, a quarter on the, all four sides, I guess, the, or half of the tube marked. But this this side, I'll have to make a template from this, transfer that to this side, to be able to uh, get uh, the whole thing cut. So, next step is to make that template. So, if you look really closely the prop is still offset in 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 the tunnel here that's because there's a a gasket missing here so that'll lift the leg a, a couple of millimeters putting the prop in the center mm -hmm. so that's how it's going to go in once it goes in but uh, for now this is just allowing me to fairly accurately level this and use a straight edge or pencil actually to to mark this line now that i have that i can make a template and transfer that to this side what i do have though is a factory cut on this side and a not so factory cut on this side <laughs> i cut this yesterday using a an angle grinder not super accurate but accurate enough for for me to mark out the remainder of the cutoff baby steps well, one step at a time and this is pretty quick progress i think almost 100 percent decided that i'll have this part of the prop facing forward allowing the the shroud to more effectively direct thrust uh, through the tunnel here it should also be beneficial to regen having a clean entry uh, for for water but I'll, 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 I won't know until uh, I try right this prop is actually the wrong way around but uh. <laughs> yeah uh, it'll work uh, feels good finally starting this project so, but this is basically what the the prop setup will look like I will have a spacer between the flat bottom of the of the cylinder here and and this shroud to give me some space under the under the boat for cleaner uh, water flow 
but not much. There's not a lot for me to play with because of the retracting uh, mechanism. The four cylinders were designed by Axel in CAD and then manufactured by a local company. They were made in aluminum. tricky when you're making stuff by yourself like this uh, but prop and uh, drive leg and shroud mocked up I just have uh, one more to do and of course cut the excess bits off so that the whole thing goes into the bigger tube We are very excited to have reached this stage of building Vilda project. Come back next Sunday to follow our adventure. Thanks for watching! And if you enjoy our progress and videos, please subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, drop a comment down below, and we'll be happy to reply. Thank you so much! Party.